two and three. They could go top four. They could go bottom two. And picking up wins over enemy would be a good way to show that they're going to get to the playoffs. Yeah, and right now, though, between this matchup, CLG Black have a very eerily similar play style to CLG Prime in the LCS. Yeah. Really good early game. They have a top laner who pulls bands, who can play some carry things. His champion pool's a little smaller. They also have an AD carry who goes really hard and flashes in for the back line <laughs> sometimes, yeah. though. So extremely similar. But the fact that they have this really good early game was very surprising to me because enemy usually doesn't give up early game leads mm -hmm. off of trashy making a bunch of early plays. Yeah. Think Card actually had his number that game and was at the scene of the crime minutes before he was. So yeah. that's their key to victory here. But they also fall into the pitfall that CLG falls into where their team fight needs work. And yeah. that's enemy's strongest point. That's true. So we'll see if Think Card can grow them that lead. And then these guys can actually keep it by fighting correctly. Kind of the big thing they've got to do. You talked about Lurler a bit too. I just want to solidify that a bit. Uh, yeah, Aurelia and Rumble being the bands that were aimed at him. He also mains a bunch of Riven. But in my talking to him, he says Riven's no good and competitive. Though I badgered him into maybe playing it here. But uh, un unlikely. But the repeated Rumble and Aurelia bands all the same. Meanwhile, enemy esports. Triple ban. Yep. We see three bands again at Trash. He played Lee Sin for it last time. Yeah, this was what was banned against him yesterday, last night. And he picked Lee Sin. Yeah. But that's the thing is there's so much still open. J4 still open. Vi still open. They're going to first pick the Lissandra for themselves here on CLG Black side. Easy did have that champion previously. And he didn't have a great showing. 2-5-1 on that yesterday. It's true. Well, maybe he can sort it out here. Certainly CLG Black getting hard engaged can help them pick up team fights. That Like, look, just on a guy, blow him up. Maybe we'll be able to work it out for the rest of the, uh, the team fight. So still keeping some similar champions. Enemy Esports once again looking for that Morgana for body drop. Is this every single game for him now? Like, he's maybe yeah. had... Nope, every single game. Six Morgana games in a row. And they're still not trying to ban that away from him. I mean, it's how they function. Body drop hasn't been tested on a different champion. They'll triple ban Trashy. They'll ban Inox's champions. It's like, whatever. They have to get rid of those. Mm -hmm. He can play Morgana every game. Nobody's throwing bans at him. Yeah. And trying to see what else he plays. He is a very good Thresh player as well. He has a very deep champion pool. But if he's just going to stick with the formula, then it's fine. All right, and of course, more formula in Peeling for Otter, the current KDA leader of the Challenger Series right now. They've got a Maokai as a good defensive tank, some good lockdown. And honestly, even if you tried to dive Otter, those two champs are great at keeping your backline alive when this dive does come in. And CLG Black, unsurprising, more fuel to the fire. Jarvan also jumps in. Graves helps them all die. Yep. CLG going in. CLG Black going forward. Another composition that wants to just get through your front line, get yeah. to your back line, and blow them up. But it's another body drop Morgana. He's really good at that champion. He'll be able to block an ultimate from Lissandra. He can sure. block a knockup from J4 and no magic damage there to pop it. Mm -hmm. So if they go with a very low dam magic damage comp here from CLG Black, they won't be able to get through the Black Shield in time to lock down their target. Yeah, well, at the very least, they picked a better matchup. If they assume Callista comes back in for Otter, Graves better in lane, Jarvan less bad to Black Shield than Vi. So, like, you can see CLG Black, but they kept the bands the same. They're picking with better knowledge what their opponents are doing, so it would fit in a little bit better. That said, of course, enemy don't have to play Callista. Oh, look, a Sever Hover. She's pretty good against Graves. In fact, this team, uh, if they went for a very similar comp, just subbed in Callista versus Sever, you'd have a great team fighting team that could pick their battles very cleanly. Yeah, I think they're going to hold off on it still. Like, Callista's still a very good champion to pick into this. Especially since you just get Cataclysm, you hop right out That's of it, true. no problem there. He just has to get through the laning phase against the Graves. And he did a really good job yesterday of having a really good matchup against the Sivir for himself. Yeah. That's one of the easier matchups for Callista. That's true. So the question now is, they've blind picked their, their victor, though they assume it is Lissandra mid. There's always the chance of the flex pick for CLB. Lorlo, though, does play a little bit of Lissandra and still a Q, so there's a chance he does swap that one around. And so in fact, they swap a little bit. Kennen coming in and any support. There's actually a lot of interesting interactions here with Victor Mid. Victor Mid is probably the mid-range trading champion at that is tier one right now. Yeah. Because he gives himself a shield, he takes damage from you, and then it empowers his next auto attack too. Yeah. Also, if Lissandra's trying to come in on him, he just throws down his gravity field where her E indicator is. It's true. So there's a lot of tools he has against Lissandra, and they're both mid-range mages. Lissandra cannot damage him unless she is able to be returned damage on. That's true. I guess you could maybe Q through a wave, but like that's he can E you at that time too. Uh, that's like, fair. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna you're right. You're always in trade range. So a shorter range mage in Lissandra facing a shorter range mage in Victor. One thing I'm surprised by is that we're still only seeing Annie as a support. Like we're seeing the Kennens coming for the top lane, like more mages coming out. But Annie's still a pure support right now in competitive League of Legends from what I've seen. And 
Judging by solo queue, I don't feel like it's going to last too long. I'm seeing more and more Annies come out in the solos, but that's not in this game. doesn't really matter here. Enemy Esports to make their last choice, and they pick some long range in here, so Tristana, for extra siege power, will be played by Otter. I actually like that, the fact that they're going to go for turrets here, and the fact that it's a little safer than a Callista, because Kennen's going to get on you, Ken's going to pop the Black Shield, and he can pop the Black Shield. A lot of things here. So if he gets stunned, he can still leap away if he buffers that ability ahead yeah. of time. Yeah. Tristana also a good counterpick to Kennen, specifically, mm -hmm. in that you just knock him right back out. He's like, Slicing Maelstrom! Boop! Darn. Nope. Never mind. So uh, Zonia's timing is going to be really important to not get hit by Buster Shot. I hope we get to see the interaction once or twice during this game. But enemy esports, I like this because you talked about turret sieging power. And then if you do go in Buster Shot and the aforementioned victor like Maokai Morgana, uh, difficult team fight to deal with from enemy esports. Yeah, the team fight here from enemy esports is a little like zone control y. They want, like the Morgana, the Maokai, the victor, yeah. very great zone control. And they also have some disengage with Trashy. So their team fight's really good, but I actually think CLB has an even scarier comp. Really? Like Graves, Annie, Lissandra, Ken, Ken and, and J4. Jarvin. That's a pile on top of you composition. Yeah. They want to be right in your face and on top of your carries immediately. And yeah. there's really no way to stop them from doing that. You can get one person out, mm -hmm. but the rest of them are just going to pile in with stuns. All aboard! <laughs> <laughs> I like that quite a bit. Yeah, I guess we have to see. I mean, they... Because of the early Morgana pick by Body Drop, there's no Black Shield to, like, prevent the Lee Sin kick, Tristana kick. So we will see. I do think there are the elements for enemy. So you, you like CLB's comp. I actually like enemies more. I, I like the comp for team fighting, mm -hmm. but I feel like you just enemy, think CLB is scarier. Enemies comp, yeah, yeah. I just think that CLB's comp is scarier for team fighting. That's fair. I feel like enemies is better for zone control. Like if they get to the uh, dragon yeah. first and stuff, like I think this is a better comp for that. But they can't force the issue. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I feel you on that one. Like they're gonna have to wait for CLB to come into them, and then they counter engage by zoning off certain yeah. people from the fight. With the exception of Morgue Binding, that's their one way in. They can't force it otherwise. Take it. Think. Take yeah. it. Do it. I mean, it reveals oh. nearby teammates. He knows no one's there. Oh, oh, ah, oh. ah. Oh, this, by the way, this is 5.4. So, rip big wards. I missed those guys already. Oh, that's true. They always look so so cuddly too. They, really? They just look. They were they like, like big, they were like huge. They were like, look at me. And there wasn't like big, like intimidating. It's like big. Look at me. And how dopey and huge I am. I, I loved them. Hmm. I loved them. I actually regretted killing dopey, them. Dopey, huge wards. Mm -hmm. Um, I never wards, got that feeling out of those wards, to be honest, Dave. I loved them. They were great. Actually, I found it really ironic that you as a jungler liked wards. Yeah. Don't no. they prevent what you want to do? So, so like, which is ruin everyone else's fun? I started getting the, the green trinket, because I was like, I just want more wards, <laughs> so I can place more of these guys. Like, I don't want sweeper anymore. Did you really turn off your ward skins? Yeah, I did. It's fair. Just for that. I but used yeah. the Draven ward. Like I said, 5.4, so Vagar and Zillion are both disabled for this. Mm -hmm. Jarvan has some changes, so think hard. He's going to start with seven less armor and then eventually have 19 less total. So a little moderate tweak to him. Yeah. Certainly a bit weaker. He's going to yeah. take a lot more damage in his jungle pathic. Kenny already pulling blue buff. They're clearly a little bit practiced in this. And right now, the level two Jarvan will keep, keep on jungling. Trash, it looks like he shared experience a little bit because he only... Oh, no, he didn't actually start ground. You want to, like, you can see here, immediately the supports are showing up mid lane. They don't want to be around their AD Ooh. carries, soaking experience until later. Okay, he's got a stun. Oh, he's got a flash. He's got a stun. Flash Q. Woo! I like that he started Q, found a way to stack up the uh, the stun, and there's, there's no way you can actually dodge it. You must flash to get away. Yep. And he trades his own flash for Inox's. Inox is going to have constant pressure on him. So the next time Kenny comes around, if he does, so this is going to make Inox have a worse situation. But he did bring cleanse, mm -hmm. right? So next stun that comes out, he'll just cleanse it and walk away, and he might not get burst, but he does have that possibility. Yeah, we've got to be afraid. You can't cleanse anything that Jarvan does to you, so be afraid. Kenny does tank the first few turret, not turret shots, sorry, but dragon shots, and it will be the first dragon. Three minutes, 11 seconds in, going to CLG Black right here. Maybe a little honest, too. I'm surprised he didn't cleanse, because it has about a 100 second cooldown less than Flash. Yeah, I guess maybe he was just afraid of the follow-up from Jarvan. And he, the less damage you take, the better. That's true. So You want to get in that early lane. If you, if you lose a wave this early, you immediately lose all your trades. Think yeah. card, though, unable to do his own red buff, so... That's that seven very armor. Very slow start. That's seven armor. <laughs> sure. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. It definitely affects it. 
But uh, two greens and a pink ward bought by Think Card. He's actually going to take a long time before he gets any real items in. Kenny, early defensive pink ward. So we can watch if there's any uh, secondary invades. That's still the weak side of the map right now. And in fact, there is going to be a secondary invade. There's a lot of possible plays here because enemy putting on the pressure very early on. They can just walk straight up because they're starting to zone them out. They do have a ward in this brush. They're going to see body drop. Hmm. This felt like a miscommunication. Body drop could have uh, dark bound the uh, scuttler to make that drop a little bit faster. They take a little bit more. There time they go. They can pile straight through. There's the flash. Flash rocket jump slows down. Oh. They exhaust Kenny though. They want him as the target. Annie, of course, has already lost her flash. They know that and they give the kill away. Almost Otter. It's actually Flares who gets it. Enemy start out well. Enemy with the early game pressure matching complex. Or, sorry, I do that every time. Ah, uh, counter logic gaming black. But look at this in the mid lane, not to be outdone. Easy no flash cleanses here. away the root, but guess what? Uh, it's a lot of damage coming in towards Inox. He's the guy who cleansed and easy gets the kill. A quick trade back. You mentioned his flash being down. That shows right there. Yep. It's one of those things where if you'd use the cleanse on the first one, we'd have your flash available for the next one. He's still sitting on biscuits too. Mm -hmm. So hindsight's 2020. But you can see in the top lane, they're still applying pressure. Lorlo has his flash available, so does Flares. Flash root comes in, but Kenny's right behind him, though. Will it be enough to stun him back? Looks like no. They just get his flash. And trade one for one on that. They're immediately sieging the turret, though, with the Tristana. Three members here versus four, but they do have Easy wrapping around the side. And Thinkart's here as well. It's going to be a four versus four. Easy wants in. He does have his flash. Well, there they go. Gets on in. Gets a two man knockup. They keep going for this one, but will it be enough damage? Easy's going to lose his life for this one. Otter got the reset on the rocket jump. The binding hits. Lorlo's in a really bad spot. He's going to go down as well. Do they want Think Card on top of this one? No, I'm just a two for zero. So CLB heavily overextend. Five minutes in, four people versus four in the top here, and they end up with two for one. Two for zero trade, actually. Yeah. Overall. It was a one for one as various people died elsewhere on the map, but then just the 2 0 yeah. on the overchase. And CLB wanted that fight. Easy flashed in, and it just was not the fight to have. Inox doesn't even, doesn't even have to match the roam and makes Lissandra lose a full wave of minions right here. Yeah, the fact that Stixay was bottom lane just farming away allowed Inox to not have to show up to that fight. He backed, so Easy roamed and tried to apply pressure. Gets rid of the Black Shield, flashes in for the root, but immediately gets locked up by flares, and flares. That was a big part of that, is that they immediately jump on that target. That's the communication that enemy has. And we're talking about it. Their team fight is their strongest point. If you group up for team fights at five minutes, you yeah. get to accentuate that strength. Yeah, they picked the target, they bursted him down. The rocket jump resets definitely helped quite a bit. And it was just a great team fight. So enemy esports stymieing CLG's normal advantage and certainly succeeding in creating their own. This is the scary team right here in Challenger, man. They are four and one. They're already poised with a nice 1,000 gold lead in their sixth game of the North American Challenger Series. We'll see that Stixe chilling in the bot lane the whole time. 60 minions, only player without any kill participation or death participation in the game. He's been farming. High that bot lane turret's game, almost dead. Yeah. Stixe's trying to get his carry pants on for this. But meanwhile, they're down 1,000 gold. Don't know if he can make that up in CS. It'd be very, very difficult to. Uh, he got like 200 back compared to Tristana. Not exactly as much, to be fair. And we can see top lane is taking some damage. Tristana, by the way, one of the only AD carries that actually has a way of uh, bypassing the sort of pseudo Doran shield, since it actually doesn't block uh, damage. I think it's called fortification. It doesn't block damage from explosive shots. So she actually, if she's on a post, it's actually one of the better turret killers. But now it's past seven minutes, auto attacks are full power anyway. Uh, BF sword there on Otter, gonna knock those down fast. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, Fortification on turrets makes it so that before seven minutes, the outer ring of turrets all take 30 less damage from champion basic attacks. Yeah. That's why they die so darn slowly. But now the first one does go down. The he early used his, for Otter goes his lightning rush. Lorlo. Yeah, Lightning Rush is used through the no uh, binding. Ultima in, nice! Otter knew the damage. Got the burst out. Now bot lane get, did get traded back, but it's a huge lead overall for enemy. Otter is slowly taking over this game with the 100% kill participation, the BF sword on him already. He was able to back, shove that lane back up, and immediately get the pressure on it. Whereas you can see in bottom lane, 6A is yet to back. So now he's going to back and try to just cash in on all of that. But it's one of those situations where you lose that top lane turret, you lose the bottom lane turret, and you call it a wash, but you gave up an extra kill. Yeah, you did. The gold is really bleeding away from CLG Black right now. 
You're going to see the recall come in and easily match items. Otter, despite not getting a completely free farm, is a head in gold compared to Sticks. So you can see the boots of speed, little brown bags down there, keeping him ahead. And the question is, with this really strong sort of early game-ish team comp, right? Like, like Kennen's not six. No. Right? There's no Cataclysm either. So any given team fight's actually pretty darn good for enemy esports. And with this early game, mid-game Tristana sieging power, uh, I don't see CLG Black really stopping that. You can see Otter is already waiting to uh, try to make plays mid lane. Yeah. Tristana just wants to take turrets. That's how you get your team the gold lead with her. Because her base stats are kind of questionable at the moment. But, but she just shreds, are red. she shreds turrets. Yep. She can chunk somebody out if she's left unattended as well. Especially with Ayaz Rush, you get a lot of early attack damage items. Turrets don't respect armor penetration. Like, everything kind of goes into you max E, you hit level 9, you buy 75 attack damage with items, and turrets gonna die. And that's really gonna happen here for Otter. Immediately sent to the bottom lane to start shoving this out. And here's the thing, too, is CLG Black sent their mid their bottom lane mid. So they're gonna try to surge or siege down this turret. I, I don't think they can pressure Victor that easily, but we'll see. He's not there. And he won't be there for a couple seconds. They'll clear this wave up. Right. They might get some damage on it, but the question is, do they exchange? Yeah, they're going to get turret damage on this for a tiny bit, but they back okay. off. They don't have the war control. Look at this. Look how many blue dots are on the river, really. There's there's one in the top left side, and like you can kind of see Morgana, but really, so many of Lee Sin's gank paths are unknown, and they have to be afraid because of that. Yeah, they have to respect it. They can't do anything in that mid lane, so they're wasting time here. I like that CLG, though, have sent um, Lissandra bot lane. It's, it's a long lane, that bot lane now, and they know that's one's being pressured. So a champion with wave clear, which is Graves or Lissandra, and a champion with better escapes, meaning Lissandra, is the one holding that turret. Easy really doesn't have a lot of kill pressure, though, on the Tristana. His first item is a Negatron Cloak. Ooh, basically that makes it a weak her. landing phase, yeah. but Nothing to her at all. Uh, we'll see if Otter can actually bully the fact that Easy doesn't have any combat stats against him, though. I still think Liss should be safe, but we'll see. You're, you can see right now, Otter is forced to play the wave clear game. He's constantly pushed back behind his own dead turret. So, uh, Trist so far being held in check. Trashy, though, wants to stop Kenny. Doesn't still quite dodge him. it. Oh, wow, half health from QQ. That was, a, that was a fat Q there. Chunks him out. This gives them a complete dragon control. They already have the crab as well. He had a ward on the top of the first place, and here we go. Yep. Easy had to back too. So sure. they know Lissandra's not around. They know that Annie is about half HP or was, so he's ticking up on some potion. Immediately get this for themselves and even the dragon score from that early game dragon. Oh, very well played. Enemy Esports, they got that one good fight in the top lane, and CLG Black now forced to completely respect the fact that this is the stronger team on the map right now. Ah, uh, think card going for the Stalker's Blade still, even though this is 5.4 and the range nerf has been put in. Aw, oh, he lost his... Yep. He sees it, like, though. That, that's the pink ward. Yep, you saw that earlier. Kenny was lost trying to get it. Lost his Raptor buff. Sad face for Thick card. All right, Otter going to try again for the bot lane. Easy. You can see, clears the wave pretty quickly, walks away from the dark binding, and he's close enough to his own turret that there doesn't seem to be an all-in potential. Meanwhile, enemy have sent Flare's top lane to hold this long lane. There's nothing to pressure. So, you know, give, give it your least offensive champion. Just sit there, keep your own turret from dying. That's the correct place to put him. Even though Dragon's off the field right now, it's not like he needs to split against it. But 3v1 bottom. They're going to start pressing this down. Jarvan's going to start coming towards this, but they're already going to chunk it out because of the explosive shot. It's going to be half HP. Yeah, the question is then, you've got the same matchup theoretically on the other side of the map. Hold on, first off, Flares, just a good trade. You could theoretically 3v1 the Victor, just like these guys are 3v1ing Lissandra. Oh. There's the attempt. Good Black Shield. Liz still wants in. Just clears the ward. The game's kind of slowing down a bit. People are looking, basically checking the armor to see if there's any cracks in it anywhere. If you keep rotating, eventually your opponent might mess up or you'll mess up. That's true. And then they can, they expose that weakness and take a turret off of it. So it's kind of just been testing back and forth. How many people do we send bottom? How many people do we send middle? And then seeing how the enemy reacts, where they allocate their numbers. And you mentioned seeing how the enemy reacts right now. We've got a lot of wards available to be placed. Double sight stone for enemy. Whereas Think Card has just invested in a whole bunch of green wards himself. So I expect the vision to be plenty good. Honestly, for both teams. Right now, a bunch of defensive wards in the bot jungle for CLG Black. You can see uh, Tribrush, Front of River, near the Raptors. Not really any wards, oddly enough, for enemy esports. I don't see many red spots at all. Despite the fact that Double Sightstone means they should always have six, but there's two? 
I think they backed recently. Yeah, they've all timed out and they need a new stock, but yeah. right now the map is dark for these guys. Enemy have to be incredibly afraid of anywhere they go, lest they get jumped by Liss Jarvan. Enemy are getting, like, this is actually very low in terms of ward control from both teams in the type of situation where your turrets are already going down. Like, it's extremely low ward coverage. Usually you'll see persistent wards, because like now, Lorlo cannot push up past the river till they get that scuttler, or until they secure something for him that lets him be safe, or else he's just gonna be hanging around that area. Yeah. Forever. You see, he's been unable to pressure the top lane matchup. Close to Azonia's Hourglass here for Kennen, just the catalyst for flares. Lolo's oh. still level down. So Otter already has his IE completed. Graves still needs to back. And now it's turret pushing time in the mid lane from Stixay. Going to be able to take this one out on the next wave. They put everybody bottom. That's the thing. They put their numbers there. Otter's trying to get this turret. Easy and think hard. Trying to show up. Oh! Wow, the flag shield comes out in time. Easy gets hit with the Q. Trashy can't get the ult. There we go. Gets it. But think card should trade back. Think's Exhaust off. and heal keeps him safe. Think card. Almost under the turret, in comes Lorlo, puts on the slicing Maelstrom, wants body drop, gets him, TP's come in, Kenny and Graves are there, Trashy goes down to Timbers, it's a two for one CLG Black. And that was a huge fight that just exploded out of them getting too close to the turret. Great black shield from body drop, but the teleport and the way that they were able to push them off of the turret gave CLG Black the pressure that they needed. Inox, once again, nothing to say about that fight, he just shoves mid. Wow, I mean, so I understand him being pushed in this time around. He's in a one versus two. Graves, Annie are almost going to always show up first, and good by Stixay and Kenny to do so. But Inox really low participation now in this game. A bit uncharacteristic for him. He's got no assists, right? He hasn't helped his team secure anything. He's just been pl focusing on his own play at the moment. We do see Jarvan still off on the side, though. They're going for Lolo. Wow, the in crit. the burst. They know the ult and flash are down. They chop him out. Botlane's going to fall pretty easily. That 278 right, two two. crit. Oh, you gotta get it once in a while. Yeah, it's about a fifth of his HP at this point. Yeah, it's painful. Well, back to jungle duty here. Think card and trashy getting their respective red buffs. Thing is, good attribution of resources. CLG Black, the fact that they got mid lane turret despite losing so heavily early game. It's about to really be very impressive away. by them. <laughs> they wanted to give the buff to 6 a. Yeah. This is very interesting. He throws it off. Body Drop saw that coming. His black shields are amazing. So good. Trashy goes really hard just for, for the kill, but the flash forward for the exhaust and the heal was just an overcommitment. And then Lorlo immediately TPs in with the, with the vengeful slicing Maelstrom. There's double Maelstroms in this, actually. Flare shows up. Oh, he missed the ward. He yep. wanted a ward hop over. Yep. So here's the thing is, they overcommitted for that kill. If Trashy was the only one who went forward for that kill, to take out Lorlo, it would have been fine for enemy. Yeah. Because true. the flash forward for the exhaust and the heal was what put them in a bad position for Otter and Body Drop. Yeah. And then a good rotation made it all happen. So, hey, CLG Black caught up a little bit, but all the respawns, enemy esports pushed down the mid lane turret. Tristana power, Zeal Zerk Greaves. Oh my god, that is a powerful, powerful turret killing machine right here with a ton of bonus attack speed. But the thing is, Outer's already gone right now. You've cashed in that gold lead. Now, thankfully for enemy esports, it's right on time for the dragon to respawn, so they can pick another good objective and get more turret pressure. It's a very fortunate time. Yeah, for the turret damage increase is actually really good on Tristana. Like normally, like okay, yeah. you know, you have a little bit yeah, more, whatever, but this yeah. allows her to just make that hundred percent increase on the four hits, just right. even more. It's ridiculous how much damage she's going to do to turrets. And, and oh, it allows ahead. her to operate and do her job better. Exactly, especially because it's Trist Morg as well. Typically, turret sieging. It's just a big risk is like, well, Kennen or Liss or Jarvan or someone's going to jump me and my life's going to be pain. What was me? I'm an AD carry player. Like, well, you got Black Shield and he timed the Lissandra ulti for you. Yeah. You're going to kill some turrets. And and instead of the typical turret taking where you, you ace the enemy team, then push, it's like, no, they can legit poke turrets down. And I am pretty excited to see what enemy can do with this, uh, this turret killing buff. I want to see what CLB do as well. Yeah. When they get fights that they want. Because you saw it there where they were like, all right, let's have a five on four. They all collapsed onto that fight and they made it happen with a two for one. That is a team that you don't want to fight grouped up. So enemy, I think they're just going to stay spread out. Like Inox is not showing up to these fights. That might be a theme for a while. Just get him so far. I mean, Abyssal first, he's not going to take much magic damage. 
get your upgrades going, maybe get a death cap and a he, Zonia's and just He doesn't even have one yet, I believe. He's still sitting on the Mark One. Yeah. Blue is the next one. You when it turns blue, you know he's actually got the ability to uh upgrade one of those abilities. It's like a blue, purple, and a red. I believe so, yeah. Well, he gets his blue buff here, zaps it, level 12 victor. He is ahead of easy by a little bit, but not for long. There's 12 for him. It's actually kind of strange that he hasn't upgraded any of them. Because you usually you want, want that first... You bad. You want that first augmented spell, usually. Yeah. It's but, a more defensive nope. build. He just wants to farm right now, which is a little bit un inox like He's normally a pretty aggressive player, I would say. Oh, this is going to be the last outer turret in the game going down, but here we go. Super Look at this. worth it. He's, if he gets an explosive charge on that. He used it for the last wave. He couldn't use it for the turret. He's going to get maybe two auto attacks on, but he's got to respect this a little bit. Good job using sticks to push top lane turret down. Bot tier two incredibly low. I expect it to die this wave. There's a few wards. They can likely track Jarvan. Everybody's grouped up here, though. Inox is shoving mid. They have to answer it. So now the shove from Inox is actually showing itself in something that enemy can take advantage of. They're starting to move towards this bottom lane. Inox has all of this area warded. It would be a five on four, though. Flares now has his oh, TP. Otter combo. Flash ult combo. Otter, he's going to try to get out with Flash. Gets a shield from Trashy, and he does rocket jump away. Saves it, but many ults are now down for both sides. What's the follow-up going to be like? Sapling Slow says nothing. They can't do anything about it. They have to They have to disengage. They can no longer siege that turret. Enemy have to back up. The CLB can't continue the fight either. And now they have to do wave management and clear. All right, so happy times then. CLG Black managed to stop the push. They can get their waves back in order. Wow. Inox goes straight from from Mark 1 to perfect on, on his augment. Oh my god. 138 ability power now from yeah. that item, so he's looking pretty decent. He's got the upgraded fast-moving Chaos Storm. It was giving him uh, 70 before that, and now it's giving him about twice that. Well, he, he had the prototype and he upgraded it one time. That's what so oh, okay. it starts purple, then it turns yellow. Then it goes blue. Then, uh, then, uh, prototype Mark 1. Yes. Mark 2, perfect. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I don't plan a Victor. I yeah. apologize, Victor Mains. I got you wrong. I you got failed it. You, got you. It. you. got it. We're going to move on. It's perfect now. So he skipped He skipped one and went for the next one. Yeah. Skip tier two. Yeah. 2,000 gold worth of augments. I think that's correct. And bot lane is under fire one more time. Really quick clear. Enemy esports knock that one down. Life's good for them. They forced Graves to recall. He couldn't push top lane anymore. Actually, the weird thing is, I think Sixty could have kept pushing. They saw four guys bot lane. There's no way they pushed out an inhibitor turret. There was an easy way to pressure inhib turret here. They're not going to defend their own jungle in time. Nothing's able to be done for these guys. Enemy are still the team ahead in gold, and they've got a perfect hex or victor. Yeah, and they have a Phantom Dancer completed on Otter. He's They're in a massive. very good spot. Uh, he's massive right now, right now, like you said. They're in a very good spot to just start taking over the map. Immediately shoot up to a 3.5k gold lead just off of taking turrets and taking advantages on the map. Good things overall then for the red team. Ooh. They immediately put all their wards over on the Baron side. Like, we have nothing to do in that bottom side. We've already taken the tier 2. Dragon isn't up for a minute and 30. Let's go ahead. Let's get Otter this red buff on top of his red buff. Yeah. And then we're going to start forming up, pushing waves, pushing sideways, making sure that they can't do Baron. We have vision of it just in case they want to go for it. And that sure. we leave the option open to ourselves. So here's the next fun part. 1 minute 15 till Dragon. And because enemy esports all ran top side and were forced to recall and got Baron control, CLG Black have Dragon control. They're actually the guys with uh, a good number of deep wards actually throughout that Eastern jungle that theoretically it should be so hard for enemy to face check. Otter has no idea if there's a Lissandra in that brush. Walks into it anyway. I think actually, we saw this under me. No idea if Jarvan's in that brush. How about that? Yes. He had absolutely no idea if Jarvan was in that brush. All right. One last recall for a longsword. And a Negatron, oh, sorry, Null Magic Mantle. He knows to be afraid of Liss Kennen. Makes an early sidestep for some magic resist. And now the team's going to move forward. They know Dragon's in 30 seconds here. CLG Black would like to stop enemy from getting the movement speed buff from Dragon 3. And they can combine that with flares, with his righteous glory. They now have engaged tools to chase you down when it's up in the open. Wow. Like I said, enemy, it's hard for them to force things. But with this, it's a lot easier for them too. They just walked right in. Yep. Nobody stopped enemy esports from just walking into the river and getting ward control back without respecting a single champion. Lorla would have to TP in because it would have been a 4v5. And them forcing 
Like the, just the zone control too from Victor is really big. They have to respect a lot of what enemy can do as a composition. Well, that's why your goal is to push the top lane in, then recall and walk your top laner back and use him as a battering ram to get in for vision control and right in full vision. Enemy esports start dragon number three. There's TP the teleport flank. in from Ken and Lissandra's gonna show up as well. Oh, he goes Lulu through. goes in, gets oh, kicked whoa! back over by both of them. But Trashy walks a little bit back into range. Honor gets stunned, and Annie comes in with the Timbers. They kill off the AD carry. Trashy falls as well. The AOE cop might be damage. working, but yeah, Victor's got something to say. Trades one back, but it's a three for one so far. Make that three for two. Two for two now, actually, as another couple of champions fall down. And uh, that fight's a wash. Yeah, three for three in the overall. Yeah. Just crazy fight all throughout. Stixa is still holding on to his flash. Man, the way they got Kennen out of there. <laughs> and then followed him in, by the way. Kennen and Tristana, or oh. Lisa and Tristana both jumped back into Slicing Maelstrom. Kennen's wild ride. He had no idea what was going on, but he loved it. <laughs> that was great. The, uh, the fact that Trashy goes in after him, too. Mm -hmm. Very split fight, very skirmishy fight there, which is more or less what enemy want to have happen. They had zone from body drop off on the left. You saw the engage here, and then they immediately boo, boo, and he goes flying off. Then Trash is like, I'm gonna follow that, and he gets frozen at the same time. Now, Body Drop is actually keeping Stixe out of this fight. He exhausts him, they don't take a lot of damage from the collateral damage, so Stixe and EZ's damage wasn't at full capacity for that fight. And the chains down with the Twisted Advance. Very well played there. So three for three, nobody gets dragged off that, but actually, during that replay, it was just taken by enemy. Yeah. So they have three. All right, so enemy esports sporting that third dragon for themselves. And they now move faster. That's kind of a good thing for these guys. They also hold a 4,000 gold lead, which would make any team happy, really. Uh, the QSS early for Otter. Third item, QSS. Doesn't need the Last Whisper. He could go for a Bloodthirster. His Last Whisper, actually, at this point, wouldn't be, wouldn't be that great. He's fighting, to, to be honest, fighting double zonias. Well, here's here's the thing: is he's fighting double zonias, but also it would be more beneficial because he, then he doesn't get blown up as easily. That's if he has a bloodthirster, and it's better for hitting turrets. Yeah, they don't have yeah. armor penetration. It's true. It's uh, four AD for the gold. So yeah, yeah. So the more defensive item would in fact be BT. We'll see if that ends up being his choice. Enemy esports looking to control now the western jungle, but they can't go too far in right now. Mid lane being pushed back up by CLG Black. Enemy. Only fashionably late to the party, is, looks like they'll be going to stop the turret from going down. What is Trashy doing? He's off the side. There's the TP in to the back line. Are they going to start this? Looks like Flares is going. going. Flares jumps in onto Lorlo. The battle begins. Inox getting jumped on right away. Almost exploded. Can get the ulti off, but they do trade back right away. Two members dead from CLG Black. Sticks a forced run, but not before he takes down Body Drop. But in comes Otter. The cavalry's here. Trashy misses the flash. Otter does not. Five for two enemy. That fight started off of a TP in plain sight. And CLG Black, they thought they could take the five on five and crush Inox immediately. He blows everything and he still lives for a very long time. They're gonna go for Baron now on enemy side and try to blow this game wide open. You're seeing the value of the Abyssal Scepter Rush and Black Shield on top. There's not enough damage got done. Even though Body Drop did not even have Exhaust him, it simply did not matter. First couple respawns come in. Think Card is walking across the map, but he will not arrive in time to steal away Baron, I don't think. Enemy esports are going to get Baron off of that clutch team fight. Down it goes, and out they head. Yep, Jarvan off on the side. No way he's able to contest this. They don't have any globals, so no. Otter could die. Otter. 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 He died. Oh boy. So that bind makes that TP really easy, by the way. Kenny's stuck here. And Lola's like, I'll defend you! And then they all clump up here, and then they say, let's go on Inox. Black Shield takes a lot of damage. Ultimate doesn't hit, he still hits his cleanse too. And then Finkard is getting obliterated by Otter at the same time. But the big thing was what was happening to Lorlo and the rest of the team. Stixay trying to burst through them doesn't have the same type of damage output. You see Otter actually takes that extra half second to line up his flash. He's like, <laughs> she's like, Trashy messed it up, but... So he gets the flash. But he dies to red buff, and yeah, he lost the uh, he lost the Baron buff as well. Mm. Whoops. So All he's right. really six one in six. No, <laughs> that's a death. That is a very real death. Ooh, big card. What are we going in for? Too. He's trying again. The Victor burst comes out, and it might just trade back. It does. 
But mid laner for jungler is pretty worth it. Just the durability there on Inox with the black shield on top of everything just makes it so hard to kill him. And he's able to take out Think Hard at the same time. But look at that, Kenny face checks. He's caught warding, goes down right away to the top laner and the jungler. Baron buffed up enemy esports. Looking to push mid. It's going to be so hard to clear these waves, too. They're going to zone them off on the side. Easy. He's going to have to take the long way route. There's the Righteous Glory. Ooh. Oh. Almost got him with the root. That was so close. His flash is almost up as well on Flare's side. All right, Jarvan's back up right now. It is a four versus four. They're How gonna long this turret, though. Does we want to stay? They're going to stay for Lorla, but he pops his zonings without ulting, which means they can get him right back afterwards. No stun comes out from Kennen. Will they stay for the turret? Looks like the answer is yes. He's done some crash, but who cares? It's a Lee Sin jungle with plenty of tank items. Doesn't take any meaningful damage from Easy. Now the inhibitor under fire. It's a four versus four again as Kenny respawns. He's charged up the stun. Enemy walks out with some uh, buffed up minions. Yeah, they don't even have Inox there or had him at all for this entire push. It was off the pick of Kenny, the zoning off of Easy, and having the inside track on mid lane. They get Lorlo in a very desperate situation. Didn't pop his ultimate, just decides to zone his 0, 6, and 5. He's definitely feeling the pressure of this game and also had two bans thrown at him in champion yeah. select. I was just thinking about that is, you know, this is a player who, this is basically his competitive uh, debut. This is his second week playing with CLG Black. First time I've seen him really in any competitive setting. So I don't even see Kennen on his list of most played in solo queue. His top two are Aurelia Rumble. He's top 25, like this guy is really good, but you take him off his comfort champions. His number three being Riven says he doesn't even want to play that in competitive. And well, his performances seem to be immediately lowered here. And he's not the carry he was last week. Yeah, really taking him off that Aurelia is a big boon for enemy. Playing the pick and ban very well. And like Inox, he could play whatever he wanted. He was completely open. He's like, I'm gonna play Victor. Mm -hmm. He could play the Zareth. He could play a lot of different things for himself, but no. He goes with that. Oh, uh, nope, not gonna take it. They do, they are alerted to the presence of CLG Black though. They're trying to death brush this. Just takes A, eats a sapling. But it looks like dragon number four in 10 seconds is enemy's target. Mid inhibitor already open. Mid lane wave already cleared. So nothing for enemy to get pushed around with. Bot lane is open. There's the TP flank one Same more time spot. from Kennen. Can go in. make it happen. Goes in, kick back towards Otter. Can he pop the Zonias? Yes, he can. He gets some really meaningful damage, but Think Card already blows up to Victor. It's a one for zero. Body drop trades back with the enemy jungler, and he got more happening now. Three for one already. Easy force to run. There's just no damage left on CLG Black. And that's going to be the fourth kill of the fight. That is just a crazy team composition here from enemy. It's so hard to kill whoever has Black Shield on them, and Body Drop is on top of those. He's using his, uh, they have double lockets right now too, so they're shielding, they're sh extra shielding somebody. They're throwing the Black Shield on him. Inox isn't going down, Otter isn't going down that fight, and the main damage dealers are staying alive for a prolonged time, and they're such high damage at this point. Yeah, you're forced to engage in on Victor and Tristana, and Maokai sucks at the damage as I dare you to. Works out beautifully so far. Enemy Esports looking at a double inhibitor take off of that team fight. They didn't go for a dragon. They wanted the base to die. Now they can drag on the retreat, but with double inhibitors down, this is enemy's Esports game to lose. Trashy and Otter are doing an amazing job of keeping Lorlo out of the fight for as long as possible. Yeah. He's flashing in, and then he's getting kicked out, buster shotted out, and they're just completely aware of that. He W's in to kick him, and then Otter he yeah, actually has a decent ult, though, is yeah, the thing. Yeah, Otter doesn't actually get his uh, Buster Shot off there. Instead, they're too worried. They're backing up, trying to stay away from this composition from CLG Black that's diving them. Otter stays alive. Inox stays alive with the Lockets, with the Black Shield. And enemy are in a great spot. They're up 13,000 gold. They're definitely looking like the team that when they group up for fights, they know how to, how to play those fights out. And CLG Black are looking more like we get in a fight, let's dive somebody, but it's not always that black and white. It's not always all everybody onto the back line. It's like, wait, there's flares. There's 5, 0, and 12 Maokai in our face. Full tank. And you have to respect the victor damage while you're getting locked up by flares. And if you get to Otter, what damage are you going to do to him when Body Drop is shielding him? They're getting Body Drop some of these fights, but it's just very chaotic from CLG Black.
Yeah, Chaotic indeed, they just can't get the targets down. I'm actually surprised Inox going with Deathcap over Zonius. He's still staying alive through it all the same. Just the really offensive build working out for him. QSS, of course, helping Otter a little bit as well. There's just, just enough defense here. You mentioned the double lockets as well. The AoE burst, just not enough here for counter logic gaming black. Here's the mini wave for the top side. Again, double inhibitors down, mean mid and bot will constantly push in. The blue team will have to eventually retreat and clear those waves, but for now, CLB not afraid. They know Lee Sin's mid. 5v4, they clear the mini wave out very aggressively. They're not letting damage come through. Baron in 15 seconds, they've already set up for it, having scuttle control. Enemy, their warning game early is very questionable, but they outwarded CLG Black. Yeah. All throughout all stages of the game. They were the ones applying pressure, and now they're going to get a Baron just off of their ward control. They could see every entrance here the enemy could possibly take into this pit, and they could set up for it instantaneously. Now you TP into a ward and try brush above them and walk down the river. Not going to happen. Enemy esports, they get themselves Baron at number two this game. 34 45. They got a nice wave top lane right here, ready for them. And at the same time, the rest of CLG Black are forced inside their base due to the inhibitor deaths. This will be turret number eight, and they can go right in for the inhibitor turret as well. Continuing to push. They get this third inhibitor. It's only 35 minutes in the game. This is the time that they've ended their game yesterday. And look at that. He doesn't even care. Otter goes straight for the turret with the explosive charge. Junk. Off of one siege, they get it down to one fourth HP, and they still have this cannon minion up too. Who can clear this? They're all mid range. Without any minions in front, Liss can't reach it. Yeah, nobody can reach this. They'd have to devote their body to getting all the way up there. No and their front, their front line. Minions. Oh, there's the engagement flares. On to Stixay. Pop righteous glory. Yep, gonna lock up Stixay. Just buy some time. The turret's already dead. Kenny's got a charge on his head. They re-engage. They blow up Otter. Think card's pretty low for this, though. Lorlo also taking a lot of AoE. Inox kites back safely. His ult is gonna claim the second kill for himself this fight. It's a two for one so far. CLB did decent, but Easy's now in the wrong spot. That's gonna be a quick kill picked up. A double for Inox in this one. Minions inside the base as well. This could be the game-winning push if they're willing to stick it out. Triple inhibitor down. Looks like they're willing to play it much more safely, though. They see that they have all the advantages that they need in this game. Inox is doing monstrous damage, and they're focusing Otter down. Doesn't even get his flash or his heal off. Just eats the pavement, but he he can't really, like, there's too many threats. Yep. CLG Black, they just have to deal with too many threats on enemy. And at this point, Flares is a threat all in his own. Like, you see him dive the backline. He doesn't care. He keeps Stixay out of this fight forever. They get the turret, and then Lorlo's like, all right, it's time to go off the back of Think Card. Let's get to the backline. And this time, Easy's trying to get to Inox, and Inox is just putting his ultimate down, throwing out his damage, gets huge chunks onto Easy here, and forces the Zonias in the mispositioning there of the team. They have to dive the backline. And that's the counter engage two of enemy. They have zone control with all of these different abilities that they're able to keep CLG Black away from them once they do engage. And of course, to get only one guy at a time, the Bloodthirster now done for Otter. He's got a couple extra hundred health to work through. That's already been difficult enough for them. Mid and hip goes back down. Bottom hip going to be refocused. It actually already has super minions because of how the minion waves were managed before. So they can ride this wave directly into the base potentially. And if it's not this wave, it's the one in the top lane, too. They're just taking so much turret damage here. It's the final stand. There we go. Next turret number one. There's the engage. Think card does not reach Otter. He's going to blow up first. Already a two for zero. This is going to be a very clean and easy fight for enemy esports. Everyone kites out safely. Five for zero. A triple kill for Inox. That's going to be the Nexus. Two, zero. Enemy esports. What? Still the team to beat. Quadra kill for Inox on Victor. This guy was playing Nidalee for the longest time, pulls out a Cassidy, a Zareth, a LeBlanc, an Ari, and now a Victor. Mm -hmm. He's showing he can play almost anything in that mid lane. He's yeah. constantly impressing on it. Adapting well to the champions that seem to be popularized. It's it's interesting. I, I, I Okay, first I'm going to talk about enemy esports and how good they are, and then talk about what I like about yeah. the, the Victor pickup overall. So certainly a very strong team. They're in first place by two games now. We can see teams catch up throughout the day. Two more matches, of course, to show if any of the three two teams uh, can catch back up with these guys. Final Five and TDK being those applicants here, if they can uh, get within one. But overall, 
great game so far by enemy esports. Uh, the Victor pick I like just because even though it's just sort of copying other teams, you can see what comps it works with and say, yeah, we can run that too that fits our style and just adapt it. Yeah. All right, well, joining us to talk about that victory on the Rift is enemies AD carry Otter. Otter, welcome to the show, man. Very nicely done, dude. Hey, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Tristana came out for you as like your last pick there is just, just like this great sieging champion. What was sort of the reason behind going Tristan this game? Um, something to send the cannon out, out of the fight, and also uh, a hyper carry for the end game. Makes it easy to siege on towers as well. All right, how hard is red buff? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, I lag there. <laughs> I lag. a lag. Lag, definitely, yeah. The I, PvE is uh, difficult with pain. I, yeah. I, I, I have a serious question for you, though. Um, we keep hearing about body drop and how you handpicked him. At this point, he's AKA handpicked. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick him? What stood out to you from Body Drop? Because he was somebody who was around for a little bit, but never really impressed to huge uh, like measures. Honestly, the reason why I picked Body Drop is because uh, I don't really, I don't get along too well with like just uh, like any supports. And anytime I had him in solo queue, he actually wasn't that impressive, but he was he was easy to work with. And that was this was like a year or two ago when we were on an amateur team together or another amateur team called Infinite Odds, and yeah, he, we just we just had good synergy together. So <laughs> yeah, and I when I was when 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 they were remaking Enemy, I was looking uh, when they asked me to find my own support, and then he was looking to to try to go professional again. So I so I asked him. Nice. And yeah, I like that your first impression was he wasn't that impressive. Well, yeah. <laughs> he, he was really under the radar for the longest time. Only yeah. time I'd ever seen him play something well was Thresh. He yeah. had really good hooks. Yeah, so far six more in a row. At some point, I'm sure it'll be banned away from him, but for now, it's great. So next week, as you guys are in first place, you're up against the last place team right now, TSM Darkness. How do you feel that match is going to go? Oh, um, I'm pretty. I'm pretty confident that we'll that we'll two zero them. <laughs> oh. Just no holds barred. Yeah, two zero. Yeah, free. Just, I, if, I'm pretty confident. We'll no red buffs get in the way. <laughs> yeah. <if no. laughs> No, nothing will hold stop you down. <laughs> no, not even Red Buff will stop you. All right, Otter. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we're going to ring the bell for our second matchup between TSM Darkness and Final Five. Don't go anywhere. In comes Lorlo, puts on the slicing maelstrom, wants body drop, gets him. TPs come in, Kenny and Graves are there. Trashy goes down to Timbers. Well, oh, he goes Lorlo through. goes in, gets oh, kicked whoa. back over by both of them. But Trashy walks a little bit back into range. Otter gets stunned, and Annie comes in with the Timbers. Two members dead from CLG Black. Sticks a force run, but not before he takes down body drop. But in comes Otter. The cavalry's here. Trashy misses the flash. Otter does not. They re-engage. They blow up Otter. Think card's pretty low for this, though. Lorlo also taking a lot of AoE. Inox kites back safely. His Zoldi's gonna claim the second kill for himself. 